Welcome to this Sunday service from St. Columba's Church in Ennis, County Clare, with the churches of Kilnasula and Christ Church, Spanish Point. I must apologise for the delivery of parts of this service today, as I've just contracted COVID, but there we are, these are the times we live in. In the Gospel reading, Jesus says, Go, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Whenever you go into a town and, uh, and are made welcome, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in that town and say to the people there, the kingdom of God has come near you. We like to think that we would always be the people to welcome Jesus if he knocked at our door and if he asked to stay. We would surely invite him in, but are we really prepared for him to turn our lives upside down? Are we ready to make the sacrifices and the changes he would expect? What if it turns out that we might be the wolves? Are we ready to set Jesus free? Or would we decide to lock him up? And so we start our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You are the never-ceasing open gift of love. We turn in upon ourselves. Lord, have mercy. You live beyond all centres of power. We seek to enclose your grace. Christ have mercy. You rejoice in a multitude of names. We try to pin you down. Lord, have mercy. May the power of heaven protect us this day and circle us with the blessing of peace. May Christ, our Lord and loving friend, protect us this day and circle us with affection and love. May the Spirit of Truth, who dwells in our hearts, protect us this day and circle and fill us with joy. Amen. And so we pray. God, our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Psalm number 66. Psalm 66 Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you. Sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds among mortals. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There we rejoiced in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations, let the rebellious not exalt themselves. Bless our God, O people. Let the sounds of his praise be heard who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. Here ends the reading. Now hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking 
whatever they provide for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into the streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus says, Go, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Don't take a purse or a beggar's bag or shoes. Don't stop to greet anyone on the road. Whenever you go into a house, first say, Peace be with this house. If someone who is peace-living loves there, let your greeting of peace remain on that person. Stay in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they offer you. So, let us imagine a ring at the doorbell one evening, and, and on answering you discover the visitor is not just a disciple, but the risen Lord himself. It's actually Jesus in person. How do you react? What do you do and say? I suppose, after recovering from the shock, you welcome him in, call out to everyone in the house and find yourself saying to the Lord of all creation, do make yourself at home and stay as long as you like, after all, everything is yours. It is a very exciting, even beautiful night. All our dreams come true. Now take in your imagination a leap ahead, two weeks. Jesus has accepted your invitation and is still with you. How are things at home now? You remember that disturbing passage in the Gospel where Jesus says, I have not come to bring peace but the sword, to set daughter against mother, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law, son against father. And actually, he wasn't kidding. There's been a good deal of argument over family meals in the last two weeks. Some members of the family can't eat at the same table anymore. Some have left home, possibly never to return. Now, you did invite Jesus to make himself at home. So he's begun inviting his friends to your house. You remember what people said of his friends in the Gospels, how he dined with sinners and those rejected by society. What kind of people do you now see coming to your house? What are the neighbours saying? What's parked outside? And what's happening to the local property values? In any case, you decide that you must not keep Jesus all to yourself, so you arrange for him to give a talk at the local church. You remember that scene in the Gospel where he addresses the Pharisees and chief priests and assures them that criminals and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before they do. True enough, he gives much the same message to a gathering of men and women in the parish. And there's uproar, arguments, a massive row. Some people storm out in the parish loses some of the people who donate the most to the church. 
you return home with Jesus, your Saviour, who has now become your problem. What are you to do? You cannot throw out the Lord of all creation. So after a bit of thought, you find a suitable cupboard, clear it out, decorate it, sparing no expense, get a good strong lock on it and put Jesus inside. Outside, you can have a lamp and flowers and each time you pass, bow reverently. You might say a prayer or sing a song or two. So now, you have Jesus where you want him, and he doesn't interfere anymore. That story comes from a famous priest and writer called Father Gerald Hughes. He says that the Bible is full of warnings against what he calls split personality, or what we might call putting God away into boxes. And we all do it because we want to see God controlled, tamed, and made harmless. How much more wrong, Father Gerard asked, can we be? Jesus says to his disciples, whoever listens to you listens to me, whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. Yes, the Jesus of our story was annoying. He made things difficult at home. He made us talk to people we would rather like to avoid. He made us question just how good we really are when it comes to really making sacrifices for what we say we believe in. There is nothing more annoying than that. So we ended up making a small, cosy, beautifully decorated prison for him. When we walk past the door, we say nice things to him, but we have no intention of letting him out. Such a prison might be a tabernacle, or our churches, our traditions of worship, or indeed, our hearts. Now, of course, Father Gerard's story about Jesus coming to live with us was a way of making the point really come home to us. In many ways, he was talking about the kind of people, the kind of church we should be, but all too often are not, but the kind of church we might yet hope to be. In the Gospel reading, Jesus says, Go, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Whenever you go into a town and are made welcome, eat what is set before you, heal the sick in that town and say to the people there, the kingdom of God has come near you. Of course, we like to think that we would always be the people to welcome Jesus if he knocked at our door and if he asked to stay, we would surely invite him in. But are we really prepared for him to turn our lives upside down? Are we really ready to make the changes he would require the sacrifices he would expect. What if it turns out we might be the wolves? Are we truly ready to set Jesus free or would we decide to lock him up? So there's some hard questioning we need to put to ourselves. But it's not about whether we do it, but how often to how great an extent and how it's become such a habit that we don't even notice anymore. This has profound spiritual implications for which I might use another analogy, that of a series of high brick walls built across the pathway of our lives, sometimes close together, sometimes years apart, over which we cannot see and which can block the way ahead. So as pilgrims on the journey of life, we have to make a choice. We can stop at that wall, maybe even sit down and lean against it, get as comfortable as we can and settle down, find what shelter we can. But we must resign ourselves to this being as far as we shall ever go. Because we can only progress and grow as a person, as a soul, 
if we summon our courage and clamber over. But we can only do that if we first cast off the burdens and baggage that weigh us down. That means looking deep within and confronting the fears, the preconceptions and the prejudices that hide within, some of which we might even find comforting, supporting, justifying. We may even think that they are us and we can't imagine being who we are without them. It is no easy task. It is unsettling, upsetting, sometimes shaming, if we are willing to be honest with ourselves and admit that what we call our strengths may in fact be our greatest weaknesses. But then the task of a disciple, of a Christian, is not to congratulate ourselves on where we are, but to answer Christ's call to follow him, that voice that we can hear coming to us from over the wall. But we will never surmount that wall unless we are willing to listen, to let go, to trust and to be ready to be made a new person as we drop down the other side. Someone from our present perspective unimaginable. Sadly, far too many people in life choose to remain at the foot of the wall and settle for who and what they are. Too many people in life decide to make the call of Jesus be quieter, as muted and inaudible as possible. It's easy. We just stick him in a box. Or, instead, we could let him out. Amen. We are pilgrims along the way of life. Therefore, let us remind ourselves of the path of faith that has brought us to this time and place. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray for our church, for ourselves and neighbours, and for the needs of the whole world. God of creation, guide us as we seek to serve you. Grant us a spirit of optimism and hope as we meet obstacles in our way. Give us the courage to combat and overcome, even when we cannot see the way ahead. We pray for all who work as labourers in your harvest. Give them the grace to speak out against that which is harmful and wrong and to support instead that which is loving and life-giving. Christ be with us, around and beside us. We give thanks for the plenty we enjoy and the rich harvest of the world, sufficient for all if we can but share. We pray that none may go hungry or be deprived, that the produce and the goods of the world may be shared with justice. We remember areas where crops have failed, where people have been driven out of their homeland. Christ be with us around and beside us. We pray for those who cannot find work or who have lost their employment through illness or accident. We remember all who suffer from injury and disfigurement, all who are restricted in their movements and ability. We pray for those who have suffered from rejection or abuse, and we ask for your blessing on all friends and loved ones in need. Christ be with us, around 
and beside us. We pray for all who mourn a loss in recent times or in years long past, but for whom the pain is ever present. We remember especially any who are left on their own and finding it hard to cope. Lord Jesus, you have gone before us and prepared a place for us. We remember all who have died in these recent days and those we have loved and lost. Though we see them no more, may they never be far from your sight and care. Christ be with us, around and beside us. Now a few moments for our own concerns and prayers for those on our hearts. Together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever Amen the love of the faithful creator the peace of the wounded healer, the joy of the challenging spirit, the hope of the three in one surround and encourage and bless you and all those whom you love now and for ever. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>